and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com, and this is Trading Places Live. It's Thursday, February 16th, 2023, and I'm pre-recording this Trading Places Live for just a little bit later this morning. Uh, currently, we see that futures are a little bit lower. Dow futures down 53, S&P 500 futures down 11, NASDAQ futures down about 43, so on a relative basis, seeing a little bit more weakness on the NASDAQ this morning. Crude oil prices currently uh, up seven cents to 78.66, so relatively flat there. And the 10 year Treasury yield down about one basis point, 3.795%. So hovering right now about 3.80. I think the key resistance is about 390. That's what that's the level I'm watching to the upside. I think as long as we stay below that level, probably good for equities. If we get above that level, then we'll need to reevaluate. Um, let's talk a little bit about what we're going to go over today in today's show. So we will start off with that daily market recap, uh, talking technically. Um, then we'll jump into relative strength. Got a big day at earnings beats today and relative strength, a big part of it. I'll talk about that in just a second. Um, earnings spotlight, and then we'll wrap up the show with the three you must see. I know we're getting deep into earnings season, but actually there's still a lot of earnings company or earnings coming out from various companies, mostly second tier companies. But we did have a big one report last night, and we'll talk about a bunch of those uh, later in the show. Um, for any of you who are new to Earnings Beats, welcome. And for those of you who have been regular viewers, thank you so much for your support. We appreciate uh, having you tune in to our shows. Um, we to have our shows on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays here at Stock Charts TV from 9 to 9.30 in the morning Eastern. We also have shows on Monday and Wednesday. If you're not familiar with it, we do have shows on Monday and Wednesday over at Earnings Beats. You can go in and click on this Trading Places Live link. And when you do, uh, you'll see an area right now. It's a recording. You could simply play the recording from the last show. But if you come in, on Mondays and Wednesdays, just before nine o'clock, there will be a listen live link and you just come in. Love to have you. We also are now uh, streaming our Monday and Wednesday shows on YouTube. So you can also watch uh, via YouTube on our live stream. Um, all right. couple things to talk about here. So if you are new, again, welcome. We have a free newsletter. Just want everyone to be aware of that. You go to our website, earningsbeats.com. Scroll down, you'll find an area where you can fill out this name, email address, hit the subscribe button. It's free, no credit card required. You can unsubscribe at any time, three times a week newsletter. Very quick read, usually just two paragraphs and a chart. Uh, you can probably check everything out in two or three minutes and be done. Um, a lot of times it sets, they set up as pretty nice trades if you're so inclined. That, of course, is completely up to you. We are not registered investment advisors. We're not recommending that anyone buy or sell any securities. But uh, from an educational standpoint, we do like to give charts uh, that potentially could be setting up as nice trades, but again, completely up to you. Um, the other thing I wanna mention is tonight is our draft. Um, and what I say, all right, when I talk about our draft, we have portfolios that we um, put 10 equal weighted stocks in every 90 days. So it's basically buy and hold, except you're taking it one step further and switching out every 90 days. So there's no trading intraday or intra quarter. Um, when we put them in there, we hold them unless there's really extenuating circumstances. Um, but for the most part, we hold them the 90 days all the way through. And we've been doing this now, our model portfolio since uh, fourth quarter of 2018 during the trade war and during that. Uh, cyclical bear market. But you can see right here, this is our success. Uh, it's been pretty strong. Um, if you take a look, click on this more historical performance through yesterday's close, you can see our model portfolio since inception. And there's your inception right there, 11, 19, 18. Since inception, we're up 139.12%. And that uh, it's pretty strong when you think, when you compare it to the S&P 500, which has been up 54% over the same period. Our aggressive portfolio 
since launching it in May of 2019, up 107%. The S&P 500 since that date, up 45%. And then our income portfolio, which is underperformed, uh, it is up 20.61%. And of course, that was launched the same time as the aggressive. So the uh, S&P since that date, 4504 Pretty significant underperformance, but I'll say this. When you're in a bull market, income stocks generally are going to underperform. If you're looking for value, if you're looking for dividend-oriented companies, they don't usually perform as well in a secular bull market. Now, we've been through a few cyclical bears. It's been pretty crazy over the last few years, but we, we remain in a secular bull market, long-term bull market. 2000, 2007, we put highs in on the S&P 500, right around 1550, 1560. We cleared those in April 2013. When you clear those previous highs, you begin a new secular bull market. We've been in it now for about 10 years. And I believe we're going to continue to go higher. But again, my point is, when you are in these secular bull markets, uh, income portfolios generally are not going to keep up. Because it's usually the high market cap, large market cap growth stocks that are driving the market to the upside. And the most of those are not going to be found in income portfolios. Most of them do not uh, pay dividends. Although Apple and Microsoft pay small dividends, but for the most part, it's more about capital um, appreciation. Looking at just this last quarter, so we're about to wrap up this quarter, and you can see the model portfolio again, basically doubling the S&P 500. Uh, this quarter, we're up 8.2%. S&P, this quarter, is up 46 Aggressive, up 555 And this quarter, S&P, again, up 460 And income trailing pretty badly. Money has shifted uh, and rotated uh, much more toward growth than uh, value. Value has been hit pretty hard since December. This started, this quarter began November 18th. Uh, it's actually the 19th, but the 18th probably was... Uh, uh, Friday, 19th, I guess was Saturday. Anyhow, um, we go from the 19th to the 19th. So November, and then you've got February, then you've got May, and then you've got August. We always, we do it that time of the quarter. It's about the middle of the second month of a quarter. We do that because that's when most of the earnings reports have come in. We've had a chance to evaluate them, and then we decide which 10 stocks we want to hold for the next 90 days through the next earning cycle. And then we do it all over again. We've had folks say, well, why don't you do this once a month? Well, earnings haven't changed. Nothing's really changed in terms of, you know, we, we do this based on the earnings cycle. So doing it monthly doesn't really, you'd be doing it three times within the same quarter. Um, anyway, I think our track record's been pretty spot on, been very solid. If you want to learn more about how we pick these stocks tonight, is the draft. So at 4.30, actually at 5.30 um, this afternoon, we will have a session where we'll talk about the last quarter. We'll go over our results. We'll talk about the themes in the market. It's almost like a new market outlook kind of a thing. We'll give you what we're seeing in the market, and then we'll outline and go over the 30 equal weighted stocks that'll be in each of our three portfolios. So 10 in each portfolio, total of 30. Um, and chances are they'll be different all 30 will be different stocks. Occasionally, I'll have the same stock in a couple of portfolios, but um, probably going to be 30 different stocks. Anyway, if you start your no-cost trial, this is actually our paid service. Remember, this was our free EB Digest. But if we actually do our paid service, we do offer a 30-day free trial. So all you got to do is start your trial, and uh, you'll get room instructions later today. And you can come in and check it out, see how we... Uh, you know, pick our stocks and whether or not you trade the stocks, own the stocks for the 90 days, whatever you do, it's completely up to you. Again, what we're doing is showing from an educational standpoint, how you can put together portfolios to beat the S and P 500 over time. And we've been very successful at doing it. If you'd like to join us, uh, start that no cost trial. All right. So what happened on Wednesday? Well, the Dow Jones Industrial Average finished up 38 points, S&P up 11, NASDAQ up 110 on a relative basis. Very strong action again on the NASDAQ. Mid caps up uh, 17 points, 
Small caps up 12 and a half. Actually, small caps was the that that group was the best performing index up almost one full percentage point. Look at all the AD lines going up to new highs yet again. Folks, this doesn't happen in a secular bear market. Go back and study history. There's accumulation taking place. We're going higher. Discretionary up 1.17%. Communication services up uh, about nine tenths of 1%. Utilities and industrials both up a little more than six tenths of 1%. Those were your four leaders. Three of those four aggressive groups once again. And look at the aggressive groups. Look at the discretionary AD line. Look at communication services AD line. About ready to break out again, even though we've had a little pullback. Uh, industrial setting new highs. The weakest group yesterday by far was energy, energy down 1.7%. Still not messing with that bullish ascending triangle pattern, though. Straight up, equal highs, rising lows still in place, even though we did pull back $1.53 yesterday. I think as long as we hold on to about 84 and a half, 85, I think we're okay with this pattern. I mean, technically, as you move up, sideways consolidation, we could go down to 82. Equal highs, equal lows, that would be fine. But you would break this ascending triangle pattern if we lose the um, 84 and a half, 85 level. <clears throat> All right, moving on, 10-year Treasury yield. So we got a lot of uh, economic reports coming out this morning. By the time you hear this, listen to the show, uh, you will have some of this information. Actually, it'll all be out. All of these come out, I think, at 8.30 this morning. Uh, January housing starts. So in December, it was 1,382,000 units. We're expecting a slight decrease to 1,365,000 units. Building permits, however, actually expected to go up a little bit. 1.33 million units in December, expected to go up to 1.35 million units in January. Initial jobless claims last week, 196,000, expected to rise slightly to 200,000 today. February Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing Index, it was down. It was a minus 8.9 in January. That's expected to come down a little bit, improve a little bit to minus 7.2. Then January PPI. So we got another inflation report out this morning. I don't look at it as closely as the consumer price index, but producer price index still important. Um, January PPI expected to jump 0.4%. December was minus 0.5%, so pretty much a flip there. But if you strip out food and energy and you get to the core, January core PPI, the expectation is for a rise of three-tenths of 1%. December rose one-tenth of 1%. So we're expecting a little bit of a pop, uh, January relative to December anyway. And if the number comes in hotter, it could be a reason maybe to see some selling today. If it comes in lighter, then the opposite would be true. One thing also I'll mention is that tomorrow is option expiration Friday. And this week, we've actually held up pretty well. We saw some selling last week. Maybe it was the early, maybe we just got the uh, early wave of selling this uh, month for option expiration. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But looking at this 10-year treasury yield, again, we're relatively flat so far today, but uh, we closed yesterday at 3.81%. There's your 390. And for those of you maybe in the bearish camp who want some news to support your case, well, one thing that happened when the market started to sell off back in August, remember when we had that nice rally from June through August, once we broke that downtrend and the rates started going up again, we ended up breaking out and that move up sent the stock market back down again. So if you want to kind of take a look at something that could have an impact, I mean, if we connect these highs right here, we will we'll see something a little similar, right? I mean, now we've gotten the move through the 20. Then the 20 went up through the 50. Here we've gotten the 20 going up through the 50. Price or yield. Action is above the trend line, above both moving averages. Also, when we went back here, look at the PPO on the yield going positive. Look at the PPO going positive. So this was August 15th. If you look at the S&P 500, so let me pull that up. 
So August 15th was right here. That's when we topped on the S&P. Just as we were breaking through that trend line. And there was that big drop. So, for those of you in the bearish camp, and even though I'm in the bullish camp, I'm, I recognize that yield soaring did have a, at least a temporary impact to the downside. There's nothing saying it couldn't happen again. So I'm watching it because I do think if the yield breaks out, especially above 390, that's going to be the bearish chance. If rates are going up and you still can't get the market to come down, I don't know what other signs you would need. Now, if it does break down, what I would look for, first of all, if it breaks below the 20-day, look for the 50-day. I think you've also got a, tra uh, a trend line coming in on, in the short term. Uh, so you'd intersect, I don't know, maybe around 39.50 there. And then just basic technical analysis, higher high. Here's your first high. Here's a higher low. And then we go to a new high. So this low right here is somewhat important. I would say very important. That's down just below 3,800. So you've got a couple of different areas where we could go down to temporarily. If the yield keeps going up, breaks out. If you break much below about 3770, 3780, then it starts to argue a little bit more toward maybe heading back toward this mid October low and see where we are at, the, at that point. I don't think that's going to happen, but I think it's worth at least um, you know, paying attention to. All right. So uh, let's get out of this chart and let's move on to talking. Uh, well, the rest of talking technically, I guess, S&P 500 was part of it. Look at the NDX. The NDX has actually been stronger than the S&P 500. We've actually been moving up. We're not far from testing that early February high and off this uptrend. Could call this pretty nice looking cup so far. So if we do keep going up and test that 12,800 area, that could be the, the right side of the cup completed. And then maybe a little bit of a handle back, I don't know, one, two percent. And then possible breakout, something to look at from a bullish perspective on the NASDAQ 100. Okay, let's move on to <clears throat> relative strength. So I talked about our draft earlier. I always called it the draft. And the reason I say that, you know, in, in professional football, if you follow it, everybody gets one pick in the first draft or in the first round of the draft. And then you go to the second round, every team gets a pick, unless you've traded it away or something. Uh, and then you go to the third round, everybody gets a pick. The point is, by the time you get to the third or fourth round, things are pretty diluted. A lot of the best talent has already been drafted. The beauty about picking stocks in the stock market and in our draft is we get the top 10 picks of the draft. Imagine a football team, if they had the top 10 picks in a draft, how quickly they could build their team be pretty strong, pretty formidable. That's the way you should look at the stock market. You can put together any 10 stocks you want or 20 or 50 or however many you want. I think once you get beyond a certain level, once you get too diversified, I think you start losing your ability to outperform. And, you know, I could paraphrase Warren Buffett, but even the great Warren Buffett, one of the best investors of all time, says, that diversification is for the uneducated. Think about that. One of the best investors of all time, you think of him as being cautious and smart and, you know, doing things the right way. He's been quoted. He said diversification, and I'm paraphrasing, but diversification is for the uneducated. Essentially, if you know what you're doing, pick the good stocks. Think about, I mean, even if you're buying hold, think about Apple over all these years, Microsoft, all these years, some of the big um, semiconductor names, whether it's NVIDIA or AMD, more recent years, AMD. But you could go even with, you know, something like a KLA Corp or Applied Materials. Um, there's a lot of smaller ones, but I'm trying to stick with some of the bigger ones. Texas Instruments, you know, over the long term. Intel, maybe not so much. That probably hasn't worked out well, especially recent years. But my point is, we have the power to pick whatever stocks we want. 
There are a lot of stocks out there. If you get good at picking stocks, you can crush the S&P 500. And we're showing you at earnings beats every quarter how we do it. So one of the things I start with is I want to see what is outperforming the stock market, the S&P 500. When I say the stock market, when I use benchmark, for me, it's the S&P 500. Because I think that's a very widely diversified. I mean, you buy the SPY, the spider, which tracks the S&P 500, and you own with one investment, you own 500 of the largest companies spread out across all sectors, across the globe, big companies. You really only need one investment to be fully diversified. The spider, SPY. And if you want to get a little bit more aggressive with one investment, the QQQ. That gives you the 100 NASDAQ, 100 stocks. It's going to be skewed a little bit more toward technology, so you got to be willing. I would say over the longer term, I think the QQQ is a better investment, and history proves me right on that. But when I'm thinking about, okay, what stocks do I want? It's a top-down approach for me. I start off where, which areas do I want to be in? What do I think about the overall market? Do I think we're going higher, or do I think that we could struggle? If I think we're going higher, I want to be in the aggressive areas. So technology, look at technology. It's soaring right now. It's broken its channel to the downside. It's relative PPO now, weekly. Relative weekly PPO has turned positive. Now, did this back in August before turning back down? Is it going to turn back down? I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. I'd like to think my guess is educated. I do a lot of research, do a lot of studying. I believe this is going to continue to move higher throughout 2023. So this is a group I definitely want to be in. I want to have very strong representation. And the thing is, if you want to beat the S&P 500, you have to recognize technology represents about 27% of the S&P 500. So knowing that, if you're going to put 10 stocks in a portfolio, it seems to me like you need at least three technology stocks. That's 30%. That's slight overweighting. I probably would think about four based on what I'm seeing on this chart. So that'll be something I'll be thinking about. Then you look at consumer discretionary, all of a sudden catching fire. It's been very, very strong move. Now, this one still has a relative PPO week. I probably, I'm going to be aggressive. So I'm going to be thinking discretionary, but this right here might hold me back a little bit. Maybe there's one in each portfolio discretionary stock. I don't know. Could be two in, a, in one. Depends on the stock too. You can have a stock that's been doing really well, even though the group as a whole has not been doing so well. So you can just have a really powerful stock. Communication services. I think communication services is going to turn out to be the best performing sector of 2023. I think it'll be pushing technology. So I will be interested in looking for communication services stocks. Industrials. I think industrials are still fine. We pulled back in January, but we're still moving higher. I think in a bull market, we're generally going to see industrials do well. It might just be that we go sideways on a relative basis. They just may go for a ride. But if you get a, a leading stock within industrials, you can look for outperformance. So I think industrials look fine. Financials still look good, trending higher, higher highs, higher lows. And again, this is on a relative basis. All these charts I'm showing you are the sector ETFs divided by the S&P 500. If you want to beat the S&P 500, you've got to be, hope. well, most of the time, you want to be in, in sectors that are outperforming the S&P 500. And then you find stocks outperforming the sector. And then you've got leading stocks in leading sectors, leading industry groups in leading sectors. That's really what we're, what we're trying to do here. Now, what's not looking so good? Well, healthcare kind of falling apart. Staples falling apart. Real estate, 
coming back off up a little bit after falling apart. Utilities falling apart. Energy weakening, but still okay. The problem with going with an energy stock, energy only makes up about 4 or 5% of the S&P 500. So if you put an energy stock in a portfolio like we do, it's going to be 10% of the portfolio. So now you're getting more than double representation. It better be a good energy stock, and energy stocks better do well. Because if you have a really rough quarter and you put one stock in energy, that energy stock can really hold back your performance. Materials. Coming back down on a relative basis. Set a new high in January, but this is more of a momentum sleeper at this point, kind of waiting for this group to come back. Uh, and it hasn't just yet. Anyway, that's essentially how we want to go through. We look at the sectors and then we'll do, I'll do the same thing going through and looking at the industry groups to find the strongest areas. And then I try to find stocks within those areas. All right, moving on to uh, earning spotlight. I just want to go over a couple of key stocks here and I'll give you the reactions. First one is Cisco. Cisco posted earnings 88 cents versus 86. You can see the stock up 3.4%, $50. It looks like it's going to try to make the breakout on the opening bell. Uh, that is pretty nice. Shopify, I mentioned in my show yesterday, I thought it might get a pop to the upside. It's getting the opposite. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's get some water here. Shopify did beat on their bottom line, $0.07 cents versus flat. Market was expecting zero, and they did turn a profit. But uh, the stock in a nice uptrend is pulling back about 10%. <clears throat> it does look like it's going to open up just above that 50, or excuse me, 20 day moving average. I wouldn't be surprised to see a rally off of that open. Um, another one, let's see, what else do we have here? How about uh, Roku? Roku uh, posted a $1.70 loss, but it did beat estimates, which were calling for a $1.73 loss. Um, stock, really good reaction. Look at the move yesterday. In anticipation, another big one. It's up over four, close to $14 in the last two days. More than 20%. So Roku looking pretty good after their announcement. Uh, Datadog reported this morning. This is a big one in software. Stock down six, but it's been trending higher. And again, it's going to open up above that 20. I'll be interested to see if that 20-day holds. Then I'll give you uh, just one more here, and it is Crocs. This one is in one of our portfolios right now. We're going to get a big lift, a big boost on it this morning. Up over 135. Another breakout on Crocs. It's been one of the best footwear stocks. Footwear has been pretty good. Part of that discretionary group that's been uh, outperforming. Crocs is an example of a stock that's been a great performer within the discretionary group throughout the quarter, even though discretionary has only been good for the last month. So sometimes he's really... Uh, Strong individual stocks can help carry you. Crocs looks really good. Uh, we should get at least a nice pop at the open in our portfolios. All right. Um, the last thing I want to do, three you must see. I'm going to start off with Devon Energy. They came out with earnings. They gapped down. It looked like they were selling off. I'm watching this low early January and this low over here. I think as long as we can uh, hold on to both of those lows, I think we're okay. Next up. Solar Edge, big breakout here above recent highs, likely to go challenge that set 370 area. And the last thing I want to point out is gold. The price of gold on an absolute chart looks great. Relative to the S&P 500 for the last 10 years, not so great. I say stay away from gold. Listen, everybody have a great day. Come join me tonight at Earnings Beats. Sign up for that 30-day free trial. Would love to have you listen in on our portfolio draft. Have a great day, everybody. Happy trading. Hey, Grayson Rhodes here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.